Good morning. My name is Tim McNamara, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Lansing branch was established in 1973. The dean is Dr. Terry Welsh, and the president is Dr. David Underwood. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. 
later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we will have a prayer by Dr. Edward Bowen. Our scripture will be Isaiah, the 37th chapter, to be read by Dr. Daniel Anwar. We will have a couple selections from the choir. I will be doing the announcements at the end of class. And our readers for today is our secretary, Dr. Janice Welsh, and myself, Dr. Tim McNamara. Good, a good afternoon, class. Let's bow our hearts and our minds. Thank Yahweh for bringing us in here to partake in another time of uh, this true communion, which is your vision 
and your purpose, your pattern, and your plan, and showing that Yahshua is our very life, and he is that, that true bread that we're living by that proceeds out of your mouth. And so we say this in your name. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. I will be reading Isaiah, the 37th chapter, out of the King James Version Schofield Study Bible. I will be inserting the true and correct name of the Creator and His Son. Isaiah, the 37th chapter. And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of Yahweh. And he sent Elikim, who was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth unto Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of, rebu of rebuke, and of blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be Yahweh thy Elohim will hear the words of Reb Shekeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living Elohim, and will reprove the words which Yahweh thy Elohim hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of king Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith Yahweh, be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria hath blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast unto him, and he shall fear a rumor, and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lashish, and he heard, and and he heard say concerning Terhaka, king of Ethiopia, he is come forth to make war with thee. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy Elohim, in whom thou truest, trustest. Deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly. And shalt thou be delivered? Hath the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? As Gozan, and Haran, and Resveth, and the children of Eden, which were in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arphad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, Hena, and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of Yahweh and spread it before Yahweh. And Hezekiah prayed unto Yahweh, saying, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, that dwellest between the cherubims, Thou art the Elohim, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth that has made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Yahweh, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Yahweh, and see. And hear all the words of Sen Sennacherib, thank you, Sennacherib, which hath sent to reproach the living Elohim. Of a truth, Yahweh, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries, and have cast their gods into the fire. For they, were, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Yahweh, our Elohim, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art Yahweh, even thou only. Then Isaiah, the son of Amoz, sent unto Hezekiah, saying, 
Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Whereas thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word which Yahweh has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jer Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice, and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? By thy servants hath thou reproached Yahweh, and hast said, By the multitude of my chariots am I come up to the highest of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and I will cut down the tall cedars thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the height of his border, and the forest of his carmel. I have digged and drunk water, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass, that thou shouldest be to lay waste, defensed cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown. But I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me, and thy tumult is come up into mine ears. Therefore will I put my hook in thy nose, and my burdle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, and the second year that which springeth of the same. And in the third year sow ye, and reap the plant's vineyards, and eat the fruit thereof. And the, remnant, and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward, and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts shall do this. Therefore... Thus saith Yahweh concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into the city, nor shall an arrow bear, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith Yahweh. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. The angel of Yahweh went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred and fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adremelech, and Sharezer, his son, smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Armenia, and Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. That was Isaiah, the 37th chapter, King James Version, Schofield Bible. Good morning, class. Before I proceed any further, I would like to welcome our visiting member from the Syracuse, New York class, Dr. Chuck Weber. Chuck, it's a pleasure and honor to have you here. Glad you could join us. At this time, I would like to remind everyone to please quiet all cell phones and or electronic devices so that class is not disturbed. Choir. Thank you. 
can't stand infidelity and my Elohim is the only ill for me Sing it all while 
You can hear it in the wind as it blows through the trees. You can see it in the wings of a bird flying free. You can see it in a flower as it reaches for the sky. Every ocean praises Yahweh in overwhelming signs. So let's sing hallelujah. Let's sing hallelujah. Let's sing hallelujah. Let's sing. Let's sing hallelujah. Let's sing hallelujah. is a masterpiece no artist could touch oh no no every color that he painted he painted it with love and his signature is seen on everything he made even you for every breath you breathe you breathe his living name so let's sing hallelujah Our first speaker for today will be our Vice President, Dr. Tandy Tripp. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to uh, testify to some of the things I've learned in this class. And it's been a while. And um, I'm thankful and grateful to Yahshua because he has kept me and made himself known to me and caused me to continue to have faith in him. Not a blind faith, but a faith for sure. And I'm thankful to Yahshua for this. And a lot of things that's happening in the world, and uh, we have been 
warned of these things and they are really coming uh, forth and coming quick and it's so much but we still Yahshua being in us still can focus on him and he's causing us to see the things that are going on within ourselves as well as in the world and around us uh, get um, um, base scriptures start we'll start with the base scriptures um, Luke 24 and 25 Luke 24 and 25. And um, John 5 and 39. Um, we'll get um, Habakkuk 2 and 2. We'll get um, Isaiah 46 and um, 9. And... Uh, Uh, Isaiah 8 and 20, and the first one would be John 14 and 26. John 14 and 26. Three. But the Comforter. But the Comforter. Three, which is the Holy Spirit. Which is the Holy Spirit. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Father Yahweh will send in his name. You see the Yah here and the Yah here. Read. He shall teach you all things. And the Comforter should te teach you all things, read. And bring all things to your remembrance, read. whatsoever I have said unto you. And the way to do that is we have to come down to this school, and, and Yahshua causes that to happen. And we come and we sit first, and you listen. And sit and listen. And then you get something to read about Yahshua, because you're thinking that... These people are crazy. This can't be true. And then you start reading and find out Yahweh will start working with you, this, his will, and you'll find out these things that we're learning are true. Read. Next scripture, please. I also get uh, John 17 chapter as well. Luke 24 and 25. Read. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Go back up to 13, I believe it is. When Yahshua just, these two are walking down the road to Emmaus, and uh, Yahshua just appeared to them because they are sad. Read. 24 and 13. And behold, two of them that went the same day to a village called Emmaus, we which was... This picture. Uh, read. Which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. Read. And as they walked to talk together, all of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that mm -hmm. while they communed together and reasoned, mm -hmm. Yahshua himself drew near and went with them. Drew near and went with them. Read. But their eyes were not holden that they should not know him. Read. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as mm -hmm. ye walk, and are sad? Read. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, mm -hmm. Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not, th has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? They didn't recognize him. Read. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Yahshua of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before Elohim and all the people, mm -hmm. and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. And Yahshua had talked about that when he walked the earth plain, but they didn't understand. Read. But we trusted that it had been which he should have redeemed Israel. And besides, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Read. Yea, and so certain he women. the third day according to the scriptures. Read. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were 
which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said, mm -hmm. but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, uh -huh. O fools and o slow fools, of heart. O slow of hearts, read. To believe all that the prophets have spoken. Read. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things, and lo, enter into his glory? Read. And beginning at Moses and, and all the prophets. And he said, beginning at Moses, read. And all the prophets. And all the prophets, read. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures concerning the things of himself. He expounded unto them or went into great details con the things concerning himself, Yahshua. Next scripture, please. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. And this is Isaiah speaking, says, to the law and to the testimony, read. If they speak not according to this word. If they speak not according to this word, it is Yahweh Elohim, read. It is because there is no light in there them. There is no light or no understanding. Next scripture, please. Isaiah 46 and 9. Is that the remember? Remember the, the former things of old. Remember the former things of old. Read. For I am El, and there is none else. For I am El, Yahweh Elohim. Read, and there is none else. Else, read. And I, I am Elohim, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Mm -hmm. Saying, My counsel shall stand. Mm -hmm. And I will do all my pleasure. Okay, next scripture. Habakkuk 2 and 2. Read, and it's Habakkuk here, and a lot was going on in his time. Read. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write Yahweh the vision. Yahweh answered me and said, read. Write the vision. Write the vision, read. And make it plain upon tables. And make it plain upon tables, read. That he may run that readeth it. Read. That for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. It will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, mm -hmm. wait for it. Because it will surely come. Mm -hmm. It will not tarry. Okay, now, um, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley had a divine vision and revelation from Yahweh Elohim. And this teaching is is uh, the result of his vision. Now get the next scripture, please. John 17 and three. Read. Um, I'll start at one. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to okay. heaven. And it was time, getting time for Yahshua to go down the road to glo uh, Calvary. Read, start and over. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father. Mm -hmm. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up to heaven or within himself. Read. And said, Father, the Father. hour is come. Read. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Mm -hmm. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. As thou, Yahweh, has given Yahshua power over all flesh. Read. That he should give eternal life. To that he should give eternal life. Read to as many as thou hast given to him. To as many as thou Yahweh has given him. Read. And this is life eternal. And he's talking about himself. If you want eternal life, you have to go to Yahshua. He said this, talking about himself. Read. This, this is life eternal. This is life eternal. Read that they might know that. That they may know that. Thou only art the true El. Thou only is the true El. And Yahshua the Messiah. And Yahshua the Messiah. Whom thou hast sent. Whom thou Yahweh have sent. Okay. Now, um, I don't know. Alice, you may have to help out with reading. A couple others may. And I won't um, go through the whole thing because we have... Chuck here. Um, that's what I'm saying. You won't be able to go through the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> now, John was the last apostle. Where is he? 
or his life wasn't preserved until all of the other apostles had died. Get John 21, 20 through 23. So that he may be in the Isle of Patmos on the mount to be another witness to the things that Moses had seen in his vision in the cloud on top of Mount Sinai. Moses, looking at the purpose plan of Yahweh Elohim from the beginning to the end, including in, including the creation of heaven and earth. And the Apostle John's looking from the end and back to the beginning. He's looking back. He's not looking in, into the future as the church uh, people read it. John. John 21 and 20. Read. Then Peter, turning about, seeing the disciple whom Yahshua loved. Followed. Okay. Now Peter. Read, turning. Then Peter, turning about, mm -hmm. seeth the disciple whom Yahshua loveth following. And we're following. talking about John because John was the um, beloved of Yahshua, the Messiah. He was the one that at the uh, Passover, not the last supper, but fulfilling Passover, he was the one that uh, leaned on his breast and he kissed him. So you're talking about um, Peter's thinking that what apostle won't die? Read. Which leaned on his breast at supper and said, Rabbi, mm -hmm. which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeing him saith to Yahshua, Rabbi, and what shall this man do? And Yahshua saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went the saying abroad among the brethren that the disciple should not die. Yet Yahshua said not unto him, he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is, it, it, what is that to thee? Mm -hmm. This is the, the disciple which testifieth of things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Mm -hmm. And there are also many other things which Yahshua did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Okay. Now these two witnesses are as the two archangels that was on the um, Ark of the Covenant in the Mosaic Tabernacle. Get um, uh, Leviticus 1 and 2. These two witnesses faced toward one another, witnessing Yahweh Elohim in the cloud. Leviticus 1 and, and on 2. The verses Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, mm -hmm. If any man of you bring an offering unto Yahweh, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. Okay, continue. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of Is his own. 16, 1 and 2. 16, oh. 16 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 16 and 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moses after mm -hmm. the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered before Yahweh and died and previously what happened if those two uh, priests lower priests offered, offered strange incense so Yahweh just destroyed them read and Yahweh said unto Moses Speak unto Aaron thy brother, mm -hmm. that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud mm -hmm. upon the mercy seat. Okay. Now John, in his vision revelation, witnessing the lamb down here in Egypt, and get... Um, a sacrificial lamb that was down, offered up down here in Egypt. Get uh, Exodus uh, 12, 3 through um, 
11 and 29 and 30, please. Now John is looking back and he is seeing, witnessing, read. Exodus 12 and three. And 11 and eight also of Revelation. 12 and 3, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, mm -hmm. In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, mm -hmm. a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, mm -hmm. and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now when Yahshua the Messiah when, um, fulfilled that because the whole congregation of Israel said, Crucify him, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. continue. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And because Joshua the Messiah was struck with the crown of thorns on his head, nails in his hands and feet. Read. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Read. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, mm -hmm. his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Okay. And thus, you want me to keep going? Mm -hmm. And thus shall you eat it, with your loins girded, mm -hmm. your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, mm -hmm. and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am Yahweh. 29 and 30. Pardon? Exodus 29 and 30. You said 29 and 30? Read. And it came to pass that at midnight Yahweh smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh mm -hmm. that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he mm -hmm. and his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Um, 11 and 8 of Revelation, John is witnessing this, read. And their dead bodies, read. Revelation 11, 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Savior was crucified. Okay. Now, a lot was said, I didn't really point too much out because of the time, but we're going to stay in Egypt for a minute. Get the plagues, they in seven, chapters seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Start with um, um, Pharaoh and the serpents. Um, also, we need Ezekiel 9, Revelation 9, okay, you got first one? Uh, Exodus. Goat Exodus 7 and 10. With the serpents. Yep. And Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh as they did so, and they did so as Yahweh had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Uh, now, 
Pharaoh represents the beast man of sin, which is Satan. All that was happening down here with Pharaoh, Yahweh himself was hardening his heart. Now Moses uh, up here in the back of the mount, he, Yahweh had showed him uh, and told him to cast down his um, rod and it became a serpent. And then he told him to pick it up by the tail and it became that rod again. Now, so he went down and was instructed to go down to Egypt. And so when he went before Pharaoh, Genius and Jambres and his uh, magician, magicians, they all practice um, sorcery and all of that. So down in Egypt, there was a God for everything, including those plagues that Yahweh was executing, judgment on the Egyptians. Now start over. And don't read fast, please. <laughs> Exodus 7 and 10. Okay. And Moses and Aaron He's went in. Be, un, okay. He's before Pharaoh. Read. Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And they did so as Yahweh had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod okay, before now, Pharaoh. Okay, Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. Read. And before his servants. Mm -hmm. And it became a serpent. And it became a serpent. Aaron cast down his rod. Read. Then Pharaoh also called the wise there men. There was nothing new to Pharaoh with this. Read. And the sorcerers. Uh-huh. Janies and Jambres. Read. Now the magicians of Egypt, they mm -hmm. also did in like manner with their enchantments. They did the same thing. Read. For they cast down every man his rod. Every, and every man his rod, so it was more than one. Read. And they became serpents. Uh huh. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Okay, so Aaron's rod swallowed up their serpents, or the, his serpent. Yash Yahshua swallowed up death. Okay. Now, um, now with back there in Canada. Hard speaking for four people been haven't been up here so long. Back there in that time or their region, they dealt with cobras. So they also, in my studies, they worship the, the cobras as well. Now they're nice. What do you call it? Uh, yeah, the headdress is a, in the shape of a cobra's uh, head when he spread his uh, hood, okay, like over here. And I went online and looked, re-looked at everything. Okay, they worship those serpents, or the cobras. Now, um, also you have cobras will eat their own. That's like Satan. He'll use you and he'll get rid of you. Now, you also have spitters. Get my pad right behind you, that purple pad. Also, because you can't just walk up on a, a cobra and, you know, they're small, but then when they spread their hood, it makes them look larger. And it was always said how he wants to be bigger than what he is or look, be better, like, um, Saturn here represents uh, Satan with these rings around it. Now you have spitters and they rise up and they can see and they'll spit right in your face or in the prey. 
their prey so they can um, blind the prey, you know, it's to slow them down basically. Is you know because they like their their um, uh -oh. they like their yeah. Is the corn working? Uh, no. He's not working today. No. You can't get the internet. Okay, I got my little box, but I won't waste no more time with that. They rise up and they will spit right in your face just to blind you. Hmm. Oh, I was on the shoulder picture. I have it all on my pad. Speeder, spitters, yeah. And how he's standing there and he just spits you right in your face to just show you another example of Yash, uh, um, Satan. Now let's move on. Um, now the plagues, Yahweh is executing judgment down on Egypt. Yeah, that's the one I have too. You know, and Yahweh put the put everything in, in the earth plane for a reason. There's the spitters, you see. Mm -hmm. And they'll spit right in your face, blind you, and then swallow you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the venom. And it burns your skin get right on into your circulatory system, you know, and, and that's him with his head, his, his hood out. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Cheryl. So when you, and people have uh, snakes and things for pets, you know, and thinking they can be a good pet, but if they get hungry and you don't feed them, they will eat you up. Now, what kind of pet is that? Are these, did you keep, yeah, and the children. And there's stories of, of uh, snakes swallowing up babies, you know. But he, and when you look at the attributes of a snake, it's showing you Satan, cold-hearted, have no feelings, don't care about you, don't have no love, cold-blooded uh, creatures. Now, let's get to the plagues 7 and 19. Now, the first plague was, um, oh, before we get there, going over to Ezekiel, because back here they had to t um, take out a lamb, and that they had to eat the lamb, and, and that lamb had to be in there. They had to do it in eat it in a house Well, the true house we're really talking about is yourself. You have to have Yahshua in you. This is what the house represents. Your soul is within, and this is the physical body made of the dust, and your soul is within the, the house. And they had to eat that lamb. Now over here with um, Ezekiel, you got it? Yep. Now over here with Ezekiel, what happened is the previous chapter. Ezekiel 9 and 1. Chapter 8. Oh, you want yeah, to just hold it right there. The previous chapter, what was happening, and Yahweh told the children of Israel before they crossed over not to mix with those other nations. He told them that. And they got right on over after, and then so Joshua, truly Yahshua, was instructed to kill off those nations, some of those nations. Some was left to be a thorn in Israel's side. He told them to kill, well, I won't, I won't use the word kill, I said destroy um, man, beast, children, you know, because see, when you have kids and you, you are in something that's not right, you're raising that child to be, to believe and think like you. So then they grow up worshiping idols as well. That's why he said, 
destroy them all. So Yahweh is trying to destroy um, idols. That's what he's doing. He's not evil. He's trying to destroy what's, uh, what, that which is evil. Now, in the eighth chapter, they got on, crossed over, and fought 40 years in the Can Canaan land and everything, kept going on, and Yahweh would remind them that he brought them out of the land of Egypt and all of that. And they kept wanting to be like the other nations. And they got down in uh, Isaiah time, and in the temple, they started in their own chambers as well, worshiping other idols. And 25 men in the uh, temple had their backsides towards um, Yahweh, you know, worshiping, so moonshining Yahweh. That's what happened, what was happening. Isaiah was shown in that chapter. Now in the ninth chapter, Yahweh had enough. Read uh, maybe mm, the it is the ink horn. All right, read Ezekiel nine and one. He cried Another also in mine eyes with a loud vo in my ears with a loud voice. Can allow Janice, please. Read. Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Mm -hmm. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which mm -hmm. lieth toward the north, mm -hmm. and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. Mm -hmm. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink horn by his side. Mm -hmm. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of Elohim of Israel was gone up from the cherub thereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, mm -hmm. which had laid the writer's ink horn by his side. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through okay. the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for the all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said, In mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old go, and young. All right, go back to that verse again, Janice, please. And to the others he said. And to the others. You have the one in the middle representing Yahshua the Messiah. Then you have the six on the side, right? You like you kind of like this. Mm. Read. He said in mine hearing, "Go ye after him through the city." Oh, so after him, after the one that put the mark on the head, read. And smite. And smite. Read. Let not your eyes spare. Listen. Yahweh said, "Let not." You know how. We say we're going to do something then. It's like, oh, I don't think I can do it. You got to be strong. Yahshua said, let not your eyes, what? Spare. Spare. Read. You have to do what Yahshua say. Right. You know, it's not no feelings involved. You just got to follow suit. You know, you just got not follow suit, but you got to, you okay. know, obey. Do what Yahweh tell you. Read. Neither have ye pity. Have no pity. Read. Slate because utterly. they have done something, Israel, whom Yahshua, Yahweh loved, went after these idols after he read down the Ten Commandments law to them, saying, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, have no Elohims before thee. Read. Utterly, slay utterly, old and young. Both, old and young. Both maids and little children. Maid and little, little children. And women. Read. 
but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Mm -hmm. And begin at Read my that, go back. Read that again. The Slay. previous. Slay utterly. Mm -hmm. Slay old utterly. Young. Old and young, read. Both maids and little children. Read. And women. And come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. It said, and begin at his sanctuary. Because they was in their chambers, worshiping idols and performing acts and um, burning incense to other. Okay, that was just a point. Mm -hmm. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Which would be like the elders. Okay, that, that was another mark that I was trying to show that uh, back here, you have to have the lamb in you, Yahshua the Messiah, being the true lamb of Yahweh, so the deaf angel would pass. Now, um, read Revelation, because... Revelation 9, start at 1. Mm -hmm. Revelation 9 and 1. Being sealed. And the fifth angel sounded. And you can hold uh, Ephesians 1 and 13, too. And I saw and, uh, the star that had fallen from heaven. Start old chance, please, a little bit louder. Uh, Revelation 9 and 1. Read. And the fifth angel sounded. Fifth angel sounded, read. And I saw the star that had fallen from heaven unto the earth. Now, the stars represent the uh, angels. So we have and learned how um, Lucifer was in heaven and he was cast down into the unfinished earth. And John is seeing this. Read. He, because his name was Lucifer, meaning light barrier. Now he was beautiful. So when he came to Eve as an angel, he didn't come in looking like a snake to scare her. Now, if you want to deceive somebody, you got to be clever about it. And you're not going to be um, intimidating. You're not going to be, you know, and you're going to be nice. We got a lot of nice people in the world, but the heart is dark. And, you know, it's what's in the heart that Yahweh is looking at. Now, we can dress this body up and make it look nice and cute, and you can look in the mirror and say, I'm cute. And they, you know, I tell some children that I know, when they misbehave and want to, uh, you know, wanna, want to um, treat each other bad, I try to tell them to be kind to one another as one of their rules. You know, and they have to be shown that. But they're not, they're not being shown at home. That problem is they're not being shown to be kind and loving at home. And we're learning some really bad situations are happening to children in the homes that did you just sit down and cry and wonder why it takes take so long for them to get up out of the seat, to get off the bus, look, hurry up. They don't want to go home. They like someone being kind to them but it's what's in the heart. The true kindness is within. Read. From heaven unto the earth. Mm -hmm. And to him was given the key of the abyss. The, the uh, bottomless pit. <laughs> to just, just go and do what he want. That Yahweh allow. Read. And he opened the abyss. And there arose a smoke out of the pit. Mm -hmm. And as the as the smoke of the great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and upon them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and it okay. was com did um i want uh Did we read nine and four already? Did we read nine and four? Okay, let's read nine and four, and then we're going back 
but because of time. It's a lot that I could, I would like to bring out, but it's, we got time on hand. It with was being sealed, talking about being sealed with the living Elohim. It was See? commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Don't hurt the grass, representing the people, read. Neither any green thing, mm -hmm. neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahweh in have their not. foreheads. Right. Read it again. And it was commanded them that mm -hmm. they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Read. Neither any green thing. Read. Neither any tree. But only those men which have not the seal of Yahweh in their foreheads. Okay. Having the seal of the living Elohim in you. Go over to Revelations real quick where it talks about uh, having it being sealed in, in your forehead and in your hand. We'll talk about being sealed for a minute, and we'll get a little bit back into the plagues. Okay. Um, Revelations, um, is it th um, seven and three? I want that too. 14. 14 1, and it talks about being sealed in your forehead and in your right hand or hand. Yeah. We'll talk, we're going to talk about it, you know. You got it? Anybody have it? Let's well, read it. It's in 13 6. Oh. No, 13 6 through 14 1. That would probably take care of it. 13. I'm sorry, not 6. 16. 16, chapter 16, start at verse 15, if you wish. Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life unto the idol of the beast, that the idol of the beast should both speak, and cause as many as would not worship the idol of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small, great, rich, and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand okay. and in their forehead. Started to, and she started at the beginning. Not just, I want to read the, the verse one. What's what's verse one saying? It would drop down. Um, thirteen and one. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having mm -hmm. seven heads and ten horns. Okay. Upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay, talking about Satan. Drop down. Um, where you were. 14, or 15, 16. And he caused, and he causeth all, both mm -hmm. small and great, mm -hmm. rich and poor, mm -hmm. free and bond, to receive a mark in their right okay. hand. Okay, he caused them to receive a mark in a right hand, read. Or in their foreheads. Or the forehead. Now, receiving the mark in your forehead. Now, the children of Israel down here in Egypt, now, they were, the, the reason for them being in Egypt was because of Joseph. Then at 70 came down. Then they were given the uh, best of land, which was Goshen. Then that Pharaoh looked like a type of Yahweh. Then when that Pharaoh and um, Joseph died, then uprose a Pharaoh who knew not Yahweh. Now, they, which caused the children of Israel, because they were multiplying and everything, and he was afraid, because that's one of his, his attributes, his fear, that they were going to over uh, rise them with other nations. So they, they had, he put them in bondage. Now, when the children of Israel is down here building Pharaoh's treasure cities, okay, that all they, what all they knew, that's why when they came out in the wilderness of uh, Sinai and they built this golden calf, which is a god, uh, Boris, I believe, and um, that was in them. That's all they knew because all they did down here was uh, build Pharaoh's uh, treasure cities and they, um, and all the gods and all of that. 
So when you talk about John uh, writing here, receiving the mark in your forehead, forehead meaning that, um, okay, for us, we have the image that we want in our minds. We're talking about in our minds. Right. We go. want the living Elohim. We, we no more um, believe in Lord God and Jesus Christ and, and um, Jehovah and um, Seek and uh, uh, the rest out there. That was in our foreheads. Okay, so the children of Israel, all they knew was what they were uh, told to do was build uh, Pharaoh's treasure city, build all of those idols that was in them. They didn't know how to act right because it was down him being uh, instructed by Lucifer or Satan, basically. So they you so. In the, in the right hand or in the hand, you use, you're taking your hands to build idols and fashion it. So down here today for us, we don't have to work up on salvation. We don't need the virgin, the, the statue of the Virgin Mary anymore. They had so many. We don't need uh, the statue of St. Christopher, St. Joseph. I'm t they, they're idols, and we at one time believed in that. Praying on your knees to these statues. I, I remember seeing people in, in the church, in the Catholic church, when they come in, that's what you do. You, you, you go right up to the Virgin Mary, and you kneel to that statue that cannot live, have no breath, have nothing, cannot do anything for you. And they pray the rosary before the statue. Uh, they uh, go before the statue of Jesus, okay? They built it with the hands. That's, that's being marked, having it in, your, in mark, your hand being marked, because you were fashioning it. And we've come down here and learned that you become free once you come down here and start learning of Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua the Messiah, that we was not under no law, and we didn't have to try to keep anything and for your salvation, do anything. The church still believes you got to do something for your salvation. You don't have to, it's free. Okay, now, that's one being sealed, but with uh, Lucifer. Now, I, rem I recall a long time ago, and they were predicting around this time that you have to receive the mark of the beast in your right hand to, in order to purchase anything. You remember them talking about that at some point? But we understand, thanks be to Yahshua, what that means. You don't have to be, have received, like if you want to buy something from Myers, you got to have the, the mark of the beast and show that mark, you know. So anyway, let's go over to, back to the, uh, the plagues. Now, 7 and 19, the first plague was the plague of uh, the water now river turning, in, turning to blood. Well, it was, uh, they worshiped that because of the fertility um, that what they believed and the, um, when the, um, what's her name? Come on, y'all. Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter was bathing in the Nile River. She wanted, you know, a baby. So she believed if she bathed in that water, you know, that she would uh, get a baby or get pregnant. Well, then she saw Moses that was in the um, flags, in the ark by the flags. So this is what Yahweh did, read. He turned the water, and then the first three plagues were on um, everybody, so they had to collect their water, but he did read. 
7 and 19. 7 and 19, Exodus. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, mm -hmm. saying, Say unto Aaron, Take mm -hmm. thy rod, stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon the streams, upon the rivers, and upon their ponds. Upon the streams, the rivers, their ponds, read. And upon all their pools of water. All that, their pools of water, read. That they may become blood. Read. And that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as Yahweh commanded. Mm -hmm. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, mm -hmm. in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. So when they went digging for, when you read further on, when they went digging for water, it, tur it, it turned into blood or the any vessel that they had in the chambers turned to blood. Yahweh is executing judgment on Egypt. Go to uh, the next. You got a number in your book? I do not know. Frogs. Frogs. Now, what was in the water, because there was a stench that went all across Egypt, never before. Because when you have in that water, first of all, it was blood, turned to blood and blood doesn't smell too nice. Then you have a fish that died in the water. They couldn't jump out or nothing. So they died in that water. So you got the blood, the odor from the blood and from the fish. All right. Then Pharaoh will always say it, that, you know, when he couldn't take it anymore, that he, he would uh, let the children of Israel go and everything. But Yahweh will keep telling Moses, he's going to harden his heart. Frogs. You got frogs that are in the water. So they jumped out. Read. And then get down to the point. So when I go through one, just get to the next and uh, get to the point. Eight and two. Frogs. If thou refuse to let them and go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. Now, they worship those frogs. Now, go down. They turn... Uh, frogs everywhere jumping out of the uh, the ovens and everywhere. Come on now. Uh, uh, eight and twenty-one. You want me? You, you want me to keep going with the frogs, or you want the mm -hmm. flies now? Okay. Uh, eight and twenty-one. What, Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, mm -hmm. I will spend swarms of flies. Okay, you had the. the Blood turned, the water turned to blood, and you got the, the frogs jumping out all over the place, everywhere. I mean, they're everywhere. You get, there's no peace, no rest. Read. Well, now we got flies. Yeah, flies. And they are so, oh, I can stand flies. You know, you got flies that bite, yeah. you know, and they're just a pest. So you got swarms of flies. Read, please. Um, yeah, where we were. Sorry. And, and, the, and the thing of it was, Janus and Jambres, they would try to do the same. In fact, they did. So whatever Yahweh did, they would do it and cause more of what? More frogs, more flies, you know. But the thing of it, they couldn't get it off. Read. I missed the lice. Um, lice. Eight, 8 and 16. Yeah, and Yahweh said unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that Read. it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, lice, oh my gosh, tiny little creatures, just every, everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere, all in your, it was all over their body, everywhere. Read. And they did so for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. And it became lice in man and in beast. In man and beast. And all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Move on. Keep it rolling. Okay. We got lice. Flies. Now we got flies. Get to the... Flies he outside... Uh, 21, if thou not, will not let my people go, behold, mm -hmm. I will send swarms of flies, swarms upon of flies. Thee, and upon thy servants, mm -hmm. and upon thy people, and into the houses, 
and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. Flies everywhere. Can you imagine, you know, when you, for us now, a couple little flies just get on your nerves. Can you imagine so many all around you, everywhere? And I will really? sever the land of Goshen in that day in which my yeah. people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. Okay. To the end, thou mayest know that I am Yahweh in the midst of the so earth. Yahweh's executing judgment over uh, Egypt. He's causing this. And when they couldn't take it no more, he, Pharaoh would say, I'll let the people go. Yahweh said to Moses, I'm going to harden your heart, Pharaoh's heart, because he's showing Pharaoh who he is. Read. 9 and 3. Behold, the hand of Yahweh is upon thy cattle which is in the field. Now the cattle, talking about boars, right? Yep. yep. Upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, Poor upon horses. the oxen, and upon the sheep. Mm -hmm. There shall be a very grievous moraine. So what did Moses get, uh, collect some dust from the ground, and he threw it up towards the heaven in an outburst of boars? That's what we're talking about, right? What's what we do? This is diseases then. Uh, yep. And we're talking about diseases. That's the cattle disease. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't, in fact, they worship their cattle, so it couldn't, it's not like they could kill them, to, you know, worried about that to uh, slaughter them for food. They worship those cattle. That's why he, he, uh, See, he's just, just, he's just um, destroying idols. Read. 9 and 10. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven, mm -hmm. and it became a boil, breaking forth boil. with blains upon man and upon beast. Boils. And That's like, like sores just all over. Uh, all over. And the thing of it is, it's why I say funny, you know, when you're sitting down by yourself and reading this and you're going through this with Yahshua, it's just, he's showing what he's doing. And um, balls, you know, you, you couldn't, Jennings and Jambri, see, they would go before, before Moses and everything, again, I said, everything that uh, Moses would do, but they couldn't go before Moses because they had so many balls on them, they couldn't even sit down. Read. 18. All on the bottom of your feet. Couldn't even walk. 9 and 18. Behold, mm -hmm. tomorrow about this time will I cause it to rain a very grievous hail. Yes. Such as that has not been seen in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Okay, so Yahweh is going to rain down uh, hail and fire. Now see, when, he, when uh, Yahweh would cause a plague, then he, uh, Pharaoh will say, um, he'll let the people go. So Yahweh would take everything back the way it was. So then his uh, servants went on out in the fields, you know, because they have their wheat and all that, working in the field. So he said what was going to happen. So they're out in the field, read, and Yahweh's going to rain down hell fire. Read, please. 10 and 13. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and Yahweh brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. Well, wait, now go back for a minute. Because, see, the fire, the, the fire burned like the top of their crop, crop, and it left, I guess, the bottom. I can't, you know, it's, time is up now. So when the fire burned the top of the crop, then Yahweh sent in the uh, locusts, swarm, swarms of locusts. I mean, like thick cloud of locusts Yahweh sent in, and they ate the rest of the crop. Read it. Um, 23, and Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and Yahweh sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground. Read. Is that what you want? And Yahweh rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So go down, go down to, real quick, go down to where it talks about the crop. Um, 
It didn't. Okay, and the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. All that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Mm -hmm. And only in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. Well, that's not what I want, but go on. So let's go to the next plague. But the top burned, the bottom was left. Come on, let's. Can you read? You got it real quick. Come on, come on. 31, now, now the flax and the barley were ruined, mm -hmm. and the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in bud, mm -hmm. but the wheat and the smelt were not ruined, for they were ripened late. Locust. You got it? Yeah, they well, they, they ate the rest of yep. the crop. Okay. Yep. Huh? 10 and 4, real quick. Come on, you got it right here. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your territory. And the fifth verse. Fifth. And they shall cover the surface of the land, so that no one shall be able to see the land. They shall also eat the rest of, of what has escaped, what was what is left to you from the hail, and they shall eat every tree which sprouts for you. Out of the field. So they ate everything, the rest that was left. Now when the locusts came, and I'll be down, when the locusts came and I saw this, they come in a thick, dark cloud until they just cover the sun. And they are so quick and fast. And they get down in that crop and they just eat away. And when they finish, there is nothing left. But again, Yahweh is executing judgment on Egypt. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Tripp. Our next speaker for today will be our visiting member from Syracuse, Dr. Chuck Weber. Okay, um, let's go over to um, <clears throat> Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. <clears throat> Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am El, and there is none else. Okay, so now the previous speaker was, was going back to the former things of old, you see. When you, um, <clears throat> if you go into John, the fifth chapter, about the 44th verse, hold your finger there in Isaiah, we're going to get back to that. John 544, I think it is. John 5 and 44. How can ye believe which receive honor of one another and Let's seek go on. not? Skip up one month. 45. Okay. 45? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Okay, so now this is the Messiah speaking. You see, and if you read up from this, he, he declares his name in 43. He says, I have come in my Father's name, and you receive me not, you see. But another will come in his own name, and him we will receive. Read 45 again. 45, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. So now the Messiah's purpose is in his name, which means that Yahweh is salvation, Yahshua, you see? That name means Yahweh is salvation, you see? So he's saying, I'm not going to accuse you to the Father, you see? There's one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust, you see? So he's referring back to the law 
of Moses and the things that Moses wrote about. So the things that that uh, Tani was getting into in detail were about the plagues that happened in Egypt when Yahweh executed judgment before the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Right? Okay? So now go back to Isaiah 40, 46. Isaiah 46 in 9. Remember the form of things of old, for I am El and there is none else. I am Elohim and there is none like me. Now the thing that Yahweh was trying to prove back here in Egypt was that he was Elohim and there was none like him. You follow? There was no one else that could uh, destroy the land of Egypt like he did. There was no one else that could cause all those plagues to come forth, you see, and to do those phenomenal changes in the creation, you see. Um, even uh, uh, Jane's and Jambres, as she mentioned, or Pharaoh's um, um, <coughs> wizards, or whatever you want to call them, you know, they, could, they did some of the things. They created their, they called their rod, turned their rods into serpents, but they could not you know, uh, change or heal or, or uh, cause salvation to come upon Israel, you follow? So after Yahweh devastated the land of Egypt, you see, he declared in Exodus 9.16, let's get that. Exodus 9.16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. So who did he raise up? Who is he talking about? Pharaoh. Talking about Pharaoh, right? And if you read in uh, uh, the stories in Genesis about Pharaoh and how all this happened, you see, it was through the dreams, you see, of Joseph that Israel or that uh, Egypt became a mighty nation. Because Joseph was given a dream and then, then you know, sold into slavery in Egypt, you follow, and um, then later revealed his dream to Pharaoh. And so what they did is they, they the dream was that there was going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, right? So then what Pharaoh did is he took that information and they, they stored food for seven years so that when the famine came, you see, they had food. And all the world came down into Egypt, you foul. And it's incredible that, um, that, you know, the people came down here, that they sold their souls into bondage in Egypt for food, you foul. You see? So now they, they, they were there for some 400 years, the Israelites, you foul. And then here, we're, Tandy's talking about the time that come for. Yahweh to deliver them out of that bondage. Now the way he precipitated that or the way he started that whole salvation or deliverance from Egypt is he revealed his name to Moses at this burning bush. Because before this time, you see, if you go to Exodus 6, 3, it talked about how that before this time when Moses received this name at this burning bush, the name Yahweh was not known to mankind. So when you go back in history to the time of, of Noah, you follow, or the time of Abraham, you see, these people did not know the name Yahweh, you follow, you see. So when Moses, after Moses received that name, Yahweh, he showed him a witness. He said, what do you got in your hand? A rod. He said, well, throw it down on the ground. What happened? It turned into a serpent. So Yahweh, which means I will be or I will cause to exist or he who causes to exist, he caused the rod to turn into a serpent. You see, he caused the, the water to turn into blood down here in Egypt. You see, he caused the, uh, uh, the, the, the plagues of the fire and the ice and the flies and the lice and all these things. In other words, he he, he was manifesting the power that, in his, that was in his name down here in Egypt, you follow? And that is what is uh, uh, causing the, the, uh, the judgment against Egypt, you follow? Because Pharaoh, you see, 
it was, it was representative of that mystery of iniquity, you follow, you see, or Satan, or Lucifer, the devil, you follow, and he opposes Yahweh, you see. And he, and, and you know, when you read, you know, he, he says, Yahweh says, sends Moses down there, and he says, now, Yahweh said, let my people go, you see. And then Pharaoh's, you know, after some plagues, he says, well, I'm going to let him go. And then he turns around, and he goes back on his word, right? And then he, so it's back and forth, you see, until finally the children of Israel are before the Red Sea, and they are delivered out of this bondage, you follow? So after all of these things happened down here in Egypt, if you were there experiencing that, mm -hmm. you follow? And hopefully, you will check these things out and read them, you follow, these accounts that we've been going over, because you will become convinced that it was Yahweh and only Yahweh that delivered them out of Egypt, right. you follow? So that's why in Isaiah, it says, I am Yahweh, you know, Yahweh's speaking to the prophet Isaiah, and he says, I am Yahweh and there is none else. You see, you follow? And declaring the, from ancient times the things that are not yet done. So if you want to understand something about Yahshua and his purpose, you see, you must go back to the law of Moses, you see, and the prophets. So now back here in Egypt, you see, um, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but you're going to find, if you, if you read about this account here in Egypt, Moses had a minister back here named Yahshua. You follow? Now let's go over to Exodus, the 23rd chapter, and pick it up at uh, 20, I think it is. 23 and 20, Exodus. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Okay, so he's talking about this uh, minister that Moses had. And he's saying now, behold, he's telling Moses, behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to lead you into the land. You follow? Now, the other whole story that goes on behind us is that back at the time of Abraham, Yahweh made a promise to Abraham, right? that he would be a father of many nations and that he would be, that he would inherit Canaan's land, you follow? So the Israelites that are down here in Egypt are descendants of Abraham, you follow? And that's why, let, let's get Exodus 6, 3. <clears throat> I called for that earlier, let's get it now. Exodus 6, 3. 6 and 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of El Shaddai. Okay, so now Yahweh's speaking to Moses, and he's saying, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of El Shaddai. In other words, keep going. <clears throat> but by my name, Yahweh, was I not known to them. So Abraham and his descendant was Isaac, and, he, and I... And, Isaac descended with Jacob, you see. They, Yahweh appeared to them, you follow, but not by the name of Yahweh. He appeared to them as El Shaddai. So at the time that Moses encountered this burning bush, while the children of Israel are in Egypt, the name Yahweh has not been revealed, you see. So when this name comes down here to Egypt, all these phenomenal things are a result of Yahweh, which means he who causes to exist or self-existent one. So you're seeing the power manifested in that name, you see, to prove that he is the only true Elohim, you see, the only one, you foul, that can deliver them from this bondage, you see, you foul. So now when the Messiah comes in, he says, that he came in his father's name, right? So Yahshua is a combination of the name Yah, right? The shortened form of Yahweh, and you can pick that up in uh, 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 Psalms, right? Um, 150, or is, I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's 68 and 4, Psalm 68 and 4. Talked about that 
um, sing praises unto Yah, right? It, talks, it refers to Yah as a shortened form of the name Yahweh. So uh, Yah, portion of Yahshua, is coming from the Father's name, Yah, right? You see? Now the Messiah said he came in his Father's name. So in order for that to be true, it has to be manifest in the former things of old, right? So when you look down to the prophets, you have Jeremiah, Isaiah, Obadiah. See, these were all the prophets, and each one of them, Jeremiah means Yahweh establishes. Obadiah means uh, um, a servant or praiser of Yahweh. Isaiah means Yahweh saves, you see. So you have that manifested down through the law and the prophets, you follow, you see, to prove that the Messiah's name is Yahshua, you follow, and it could not have been Jesus, as the moderator told you, that there was no letter J in Hebrew, Greek, or Latin, you file. And the, and, uh, <clears throat> and the letter J didn't exist in the English language until some three or four hundred years ago. So the Messiah is saying that he came in his father's name, you see. So the sure portion means that Yahweh is salvation. So how is that witness? Well, we saw that Yahweh is salvation to Israel down here in Egypt. He devastated the land of Egypt. And all those of the firstborn of the house, you see, that had not the blood of the lamb on the house, you see, they perished. You follow? It's just she was reading how that there were, the, the, the dead were in the streets, right? Because of the, the plague of the death of the firstborn. That was a judgment that Yahweh executed on Egypt. But now the children of Israel, in their household, there was no death of the firstborn, you see. And they came out, they were told to, to eat the lamb, right, with their shoes, right? They had to be ready to go. They had to have their shoes on and, their, and you know, ready to go, right? So they came forth out of Egypt, you see. And, and Israel also needed to be to be reproven, so to speak, that Yahweh was their Elohim, you follow? So you read along how long the way they get to the Red Sea and it appears to them that they're trapped because Pharaoh's behind them, right, with his 600 horses, 600 um, <coughs> chariots, and 600 horsemen, right? So you got the manifestation of the mystery of iniquity, or 666, coming after the children of Israel, and they get right to the Red Sea, and what happens? You see, they start to lose faith, right? And they say, you know, they, they complain to Moses, would you bring us here to die? You know, we could have we stayed in Egypt and died. You follow? But Yahweh told them, let's go to Exodus 13, was it 16 around there? 13, 14? It talks about that situation there right before they came to Egypt, or right before they came out of Egypt, they're at the Red Sea. 13 and 14. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this, that thou shalt say unto him, By strength of hand Yahweh brought us out from Egypt from the house of bondage. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahweh slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Maybe it's That's 13? not what you want, is it? I want to stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. Maybe it's 13? 13, 14? 14 and 13? 14 13, okay. Sorry. Uh, 14 and 13, Exodus. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of Yahweh. So Moses de is, is declaring the salvation of Yahweh to Egypt, to is Israel down here in Egypt. You follow? You follow? So when, when Messiah comes in, he's coming with that name Yahshua, which means that Yahweh is salvation. You follow? So you can see how that his purpose is not to accuse you, you follow, as he said, but his, his purpose is salvation, you follow, you see? And you see that so many times manifested down through the law and the prophets. Back here with Noah, you see, again, you have the whole world in wickedness, just like you have the whole uh, of Egypt is worshiping idols and f uh, following false gods, right? So here it talked about in Genesis how that there's great wickedness and the, and the thoughts and the intents of man's mind is only is evil continually. So Yahweh appears to Noah and tells him 
that the end of all flesh has come before him, right? And, and Noah is just, you know, he's just pretty much by himself. Well, he preaches this end of the world for 120 years, mm -hmm. you see. And by the time that 120 years pass, he's married and he has three sons, you see, you follow? Mm -hmm. And it was Noah's family, you follow, eight souls that got in this ark, you follow? And all the rest of the world perished, you see. So you can see here, and, and it says right in your Bible that, you know, they, they were, Yahweh commanded them through Noah, you see, to get in that ark. And it says that the angel of Yahweh closed the door of the ark, you found, just like that angel back here is closing the Red Sea, you found. And, and Pharaoh and, 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 and the, his host and, you know, all the, of his army, they drown in the Red Sea. You follow? Here, um, um, that rain comes and, and, and drowns all the rest of the souls on, on, the, on the face of the earth. So there's only a, a remnant that is saved, you see, or delivered, because they are the only ones that believed and that wanted to follow what Yahweh had said back here, you see. So you have Yahweh being salvation back here with Noah, you see. And you could go through these different stories in the Bible with, uh, um, <clears throat> like uh, with uh, Joseph. You know, Joseph, we were talking about how Joseph was, um, uh, um, was, was, was gifted with the interpretation of dreams, you see. And he goes down into Egypt, and, and he ends up with a bunch of different experiences down there in Egypt. One of them, he, he was sent to prison, right? And he was in prison for, what, what, like 17 years or something like that? And um, <clears throat> so finally, um, uh, he interprets the dreams of his fellow prisoners, and word gets out to Pharaoh that this guy can interpret dreams. So they deliver him out of the bondage, and he in interprets Pharaoh's dream. And so Yahweh delivers him out of, out of the, uh, uh, the prison, you see. And then through Joseph, Eventually, you know, um, <clears throat> the children of Israel uh, are saved also, as we mentioned earlier, because of the seven years of famine and the seven years of, of, of plenty, you see. So all of these things that, are, are, that we're talking about, in John, the fifth chapter, uh, Yahshua said, let's go back over there again, John 5 and 45, keep reading. <clears throat> John 5 and 45. Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. So here the Messiah is saying that Moses wrote of him. So when you're reading about the salvation of, of, uh, of uh, Israel coming up out of Egypt, you see, this is a, an example or a shadow or a witness that Yahshua was going to come, you see. Now, you have down here in Egypt the four points of blood, right? And that blood came from a lamb, you see. And that lamb had to be male of the first, first born of the flock. And it had to be male. And it had to be without spot and blemish. So when the Messiah comes in, you see, and he's baptized, you see, John recognizes him and declares, behold, the Lamb of Yahweh that cometh to take away the sin of the world, you see, you follow. So Yahshua is the true Lamb, you follow, that this Lamb down here in Egypt is a figure of, you see. This was just, just a, uh, um, an animal, a beast, you follow, you see. But it was just a figure, you see. And this Lamb had no spot and blemish. Yahshua was brought before Pontius Pilate, right? And he said, I wash my hands of this innocent blood because I find no fault with this man, right? right. You see? So Yahshua was without fault or no spot, you see? He was a male, right? And <clears throat> he, um, um, down here in Egypt, they had to take the, the blood and put it on the four, on the, on the lintel or the two, two, 
I can't remember what that. This is the lentil. You tie the foot, four points of blood. You see. So when they um, when they put him on the cross, you see, or before they put him on the cross, they put a crown of thorns on his head, right? And that's the fulfillment of back here with Abraham, you see, because Abraham is commanded to offer up his son Isaac, right? And Isaac, you see, <clears throat> is the beloved son of Abraham, the father, you see. And Yahweh commands him to offer him up. So they go, and he tells them where to go do this. So they go for a three-day journey to Mount Moriah, right? And after three days, Abraham tells the men that are traveling and carrying the supplies with him, and he says, wait here, we'll return unto you, you see. You follow? He says, wait here, I and the lad will return unto you. I think it says right in the book. So Abraham had a revelation, you see, within his mind that Yahweh's going to deliver his son from this sacrifice, you see. And when you read the story, they had the fire, they had everything ready to go, and he was ready to sacrifice his son, and an angel appeared, you see, and, and stopped that whole process, and they offered up a ram that was caught in the thicket instead, you see. Now that ram that was offered up in the thicket, you see, was offered instead of Isaac, you see. But the story is showing you that Abraham, the father, was willing to offer. He was willing to offer his son, you see. And that's why in John 3.16 it says, Behold, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, well, Yahshua is his only begotten son, you see. And he is the salvation that, he, that Yahweh has delivered upon the earth, you see. It's not Jesus, folks, you see. It's not Jehovah. You must worship him, as it says in John 4, 24, in spirit and in truth, you see. So the things and the, and, and the, the ideas and the concept that you have in your mind that you have uh, acquired from philosophies and, and religions and uh, various upbringings and so on and so forth, they must be extirpated, you see, and you must learn the truth and follow the truth, you see, and understand what is right and what is wrong, you see, concerning Yahweh's purpose, you see. And the Messiah's name was never Jesus. Uh, Mary could not have called him Jesus to tell him to come to dinner when he was a little boy because there was no J, you see, in the Hebrew, the Greek, or the Latin, you follow, you see. So this school is about helping you to understand and know the truth, you follow. And we encourage you to check these things out, to get in a dictionary, an encyclopedia, talk to your minister, your priest, your rabbi. Most of them know these things. They've gone to college. They've studied them, you follow, you see. And, and, and come back here and, and compare what you hear down here, you see, because this about the salvation of a soul, you see, and we want you to know these things, you see, because as John 17, 3 is, that this is life eternal, that you might know Yahshua, you see, or Yahweh, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom now he has, whom he has sent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Weber. That brings to close to our class for today. Are there any comments or questions? I'd like to thank everyone for coming today, and especially our visiting member, Dr. Chuck Weber. It was a pleasure to have you here. Enjoyed it. Class announcements are as follows. Classes are held every Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sundays 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. All beginner and instructional meetings are posted on the whiteboard in the back. One week from today, next Sunday at 9 a.m. is our third fundamentals class for the month of July. Also next Friday, the 19th 
of July is our after class question and answer period. A reminder that the school is supported by our members. Pledges are due at the beginning of each month. Donations are welcomed and greatly appreciated. For either one, please see our treasurer. Also a reminder that our school picnic or class picnic is July 27th, 1 p.m. over at Hawk Island Park. There is also a little run walk thing prior to that. Um, if anybody would like to sign up for that, you could see Marta, Dr. Gleason, or Dr. Alice Blair. No, just Dr. Gleason. Okay, or I'm sorry, Cerna. Cerna. <laughs> I got it. Um, okay, the picnic is also at 1 o'clock at Hawk Island Park on Cavanaugh Road. There is a sign-up sheet out in the lobby, and if you do come, we please ask that you bring a dish to pass. That concludes our announcements for today. Let us all rise for the doxology so that we may be dismissed. I will be quoting the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. You can hear it in the wind as it blows through the trees. You can see it in the wings of a bird flying free. You can see it in a flower as it reaches for the sky. Every ocean praises Yahweh in overwhelming signs. So let's sing hallelujah. Let's sing hallelujah. Let's sing, hallelujah, let's sing, hallelujah, let's sing, hallelujah, let's sing. His creation is a masterpiece no artist could touch, oh no, no. Every color that he painted, he painted it with love. Signature to see on everything he made. Even you, for every breath you breathe, you breathe his living name. So let's sing, Hallelujah.